Well, it's definitely going to undergo a downsizing simply because the, the climate doesn't exist for it to, to maintain it, its pre-existing form. I mean, you saw two big investment bank, Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, go under. Um, the sorts of risks that they had been taking simply aren't viable simply because people won't lend them the money. I mean, the, the, the key part of the story of what was going on 04, 05, 06, up to the, the crash in 07 and 08, was that you did have investors all over the world who trusted Wall Street. They believed the investment grade ratings on the uh, mortgage-backed securities and other instruments coming out of Wall Street. They don't believe that anymore. So without having basically an endless supply of gullible investors, Wall Street has no choice but to downsize. So it is certainly going to be smaller, at least for the immediate future. But the question is whether the structure is going to change. And that, that's what I'm not sure of. And if the structure doesn't change, then what I worry about is over time we just get back pretty much to where we were. And that's not a good place to be. It's, it's a good question, and I'm not, not sure at this point. I mean, I don't think that's their intention. There, there was an article in the New York Times just a couple days ago was talking about Goldman Sachs. I was talking about Wall Street more generally, but Goldman Sachs was the, the real model here, that they're basically back where they were in terms of salaries to uh, the, the pre-crash days. So the average compensation there is pretty much what it was back in 2007. So they don't intend to change. So if there's not something that forces it on them, they're not going to change. Now, it can be forced in different ways. On the one hand, you have a lot of stockholders at, at these places that are very angry with good cause because they were paying out very high salaries and they lost their shirts. Uh, the, the value of most of these stocks, certainly Bank of America, Citigroup, it's down by 90 percent. It would be down probably 100 percent if it weren't for the government bailouts. Um, and, but yet the people who, who, took, who put these companies, nearly put them out of business, they, they walked away with huge salaries and, and many of them are still there. So stockholders may change it on their own. Um, part of the story with many of the pension funds, I'm sorry, with the hedge funds is they got their money from state and local pension funds, or in some cases private pension funds, basically are being ripped off because in many cases they weren't getting returns that justified that. I mean, the story was give us your money, we'll give you these 20% returns, and you shouldn't mind that we're walking away with salaries of hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Well, they weren't getting 20% returns. A lot of that was bogus, and certainly through the crash, many of them did very poorly. So basically they're ripping off pension funds. One hopes that these funds will turn around and stop doing it. Um, but you might well, and I would like to see government regulation. Uh, the simplest regulation I could envision is simply changing uh, the rules of corporate governance. This is, again, uh, the government set rules of corporate governance now, so it's not as though we, we'd be doing an intervention we don't currently do. We just need different rules because they're not effective. The most of, or I shouldn't say most, many of the rules of corporate governance are designed to protect minority shareholders. So, you know, we can't get 50.1% of IBM and tell the other 49.9% they're out of luck. They, they protect the minority shareholders. Well, they also have to protect the shareholders against abuses by the, by the executives, and they're clearly not doing that right now. Basically, the top executives appoint the boards, who then are very happy to approve very high pay packages for the top executives. That's not a big surprise. That, that, that's the way things work. So what you have to do is try and redress that balance. And the, the best thing I could think of is simply to require that pay packages, compensation packages of the top paid uh, people get sent out to shareholder approval at regular intervals, three years or five years, and also that this be a serious vote, that non-return proxies, I mean, this is kind of a scam that with corporate, corporate votes that they count, they're allowed to count non-return proxies as a supporting management position. I always say this is like we had our elections for Congress and everyone that doesn't vote is counted as voting for the incumbent. I mean, it's very much a rigged election. So you go, no, it's a real election. You're only going to count the votes that are returned. And if they don't approve your pay package, well, then you have to come back with another pay package.